military uh, Jimmy stuff <laughs> that you do with a clean strat when you're playing by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here and Matt Schofield. Yeah! Yay! Yay! We've been waiting for this for a long time. We have been, yeah. Um, quick, brief history. So I've, I think I met you like 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. good about that. Yeah. yeah. And I told you about Matt. You did? Yeah. Originally. You did. And Matt's ear is probably going to burn for a little bit, so let's just get it out of the way. Um, when I first heard you play the guitar, this is this is the ass kissing bit of the of the video. <laughs> a kind of a whole thing just opened up in mm. my world, mm. and everything changed. And it, it was that it was that moment. Uh, and I think I came along to Bishop Stortford to watch you play. Bishop Stortford. Yeah, and we did a piece in Guitar the Blues. Guitar Boy magazine that I was working for at that time. And uh, yeah, let's just without going into it too much more. It was quite a pivotal day for lots of reasons. Matt is the reason that I met Dave Gregory. Really? Yep. So is that true? I yeah. didn't know that. So where's that riffs or something? It was at riffs. Yeah. Where's um, the horn? Because I. Where's the horn? Ah, oh, the horn's here. Dave Do Gregory. Dave Hang on. Yeah. Matt Schofield. <laughs> <laughs> so, because Dave Gregory's a ma massive Matt Schofield fan, oh, and okay. I knew he'd be at the gig, so I stalked him, and. I went along and met Dave there, and then the band started and that whole thing. But that wouldn't have happened right. without you. Far out, I didn't know that. There you go. Right. That's so, very um, cool. Yes, very, very cool. Matt was the first guy I was aware of who played two rock amps. Right. And that started that whole thing. That's been a good uh, probably 12 or 13 years for me playing those things, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and now here we are. Here we are. Time later. So you live in the US now, is that correct? Uh, yeah, most of the time. I'm not uh, uh, a citizen or anything yet, but yeah, I'm based there uh, yeah, in, in South Florida or, or increasingly New York as well. So back and forth. And if you haven't heard Matt, please go online now and uh, check him out. You'll pr most likely find him playing in an organ trio format. It was that for a good 10 years, yeah. Mm. Now, in the last few years, it's been four-piece band. Yeah, okay. So, all oh, right, because you do stuff with Johnny every now and again. Well, Johnny Henderson, yeah, who is from Fairford down the road there, you know, we went to um, secondary school together, same secondary school. So we've been really? playing. Yeah, there. yeah, to fa wow. farmer's, farmer's school in, uh, in Fairford. Um, and Johnny's brother James is a good guitar player and so I was friends with him first and then met Johnny and uh, so yeah we did our first gig together in 1996 at the Fairford Festival oh, oh man right back then um, so yeah Johnny was has been involved in everything I've done um, up until the last couple of years when he uh, got busy with being a dad actually yeah. so, oh wow okay so uh, it's weird without Johnny because yeah all my own music even though it's guitar music it's mm. been built on the foundation of Johnny's organ playing I mean and bass playing for, for a good two-thirds of it so. mm. yeah and if, again we'll just get this bit out of the way if you haven't seen that go and watch videos of Matt Schofield Trio live and you'll see Johnny playing the bass with his hand yeah on a keyboard and that playing bit. all kinds of other stuff with this hand what and was amazing freakish <laughs> yeah, yeah. but what I loved about that format is I mean, there's bottom end for days, but there was still there seemed to have more space for you. Yeah, it's it's really cool because he can. Well, first of all, we've been playing together so long, so he could follow me. It's so it's like that freedom of a of a power trio. Yeah, yeah. Where you've but he's got complete. Uh, or he can make all the choices harmonically behind me without having to confer with a bass, bass player, player or something. Oh, so yeah. yes, of so course. you get this kind of organic freedom of a trio but with much bigger sound because I never really I've done a few tours like it um, out of necessity more than anything but I never really enjoyed uh, doing power trio you know guitar right. bass and drums because um, it's just too much guitar yeah, okay, for, for my ears and I get bored and I like playing rhythm and I like having another soloist and so even adding you know I do some gigs over the years with uh, my friend Big Pete from Holland, the great harmonica player, who's actually going to be uh, over here with the Red Devils he's playing with now, to, uh, which so check Pete out. But um, he, that's great, you know, just something else other than just guitar all yeah, night, you know. Sure. So that works, or even horn player or whatever. But I, I just get um, 
Yeah, I if, I think it's more like the inspiration of somebody else playing harmonically as well, yeah, rather yeah, than just uh, just and me you, or and so you, And but you can step back exactly. and then let's let Johnny do his thing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, look, we have a thousand questions for you. Yes. <laughs> uh, so Number one. <laughs> what is your favourite colour? No. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's let's dive in. Yeah. So we want to cover we want to cover some areas. We want to talk a little bit about tone and technique. Sorry, we want to talk about technique, and we want to talk about tone, and really how those two things mash together for you. Because I know you have some really interesting views on that, which I think are quite instructive. If you, okay. like me, are interested in playing more tastefully, tonefully, all of those things that we all want to do mm -hmm. when we grow up. Yeah, all right. Um, I'm still trying to do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, hear, let's hear a little bit more playing, Matt, and I think that will uh, all right. spur some questions. Yeah. I'm supposed to use my fingers on the pedal shell, aren't I? That's yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Okay. By the way, we didn't force him to wear that pedal shell t-shirt. He asked, he I, actually I wanted asked. to fit in, yeah. There's lots of things. There's first, so many. Of all, first of all, <laughs> let's. I just want to ask you about the function of that that delay. Yes. Um, so yeah, just take us through that because you have that on like pretty much all the time. That right? is always on unless I'm using the longer delay like I did on that noodle at the start. Right. But yeah, arguably the most important pedal that I have in terms of like my live sound. That, that, right. Um, so more, what's it doing? It's doing this. In fact, let me turn the reverb down on the amp and then you can really hear it. It's doing this. That's it. Um, so one repeat, or no repeats, I guess. It's just one echo. A bit longer than a slapback, I suppose. Right. I don't know what that is. But then you put it in with the reverb on the amp and um, it's just, it's a bit like the back wall or something. Yeah, it's yeah. just, um, and it just makes a space. And uh, I've tried about every delay up until a few years ago, I just gave up. And I just, this one just does exactly what I want in terms of the voicing of it. It's 
sort of dark but not analog dark and it mm. just never gets in the way and then you don't really hear it isn't that funny though because when you I thought it was going to be so much, so much more subtle that when you did the note by itself, it's like, it's, yeah, it's yeah, right yeah. there, could... and then all of a sudden, yeah. it just sort of melts into the background. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, you said it, it doesn't get in the way. No. Is... Yeah, that's the deep blue thing. It, do, it, does, uh, it does that better than anything else I've found. And you, yeah, so you don't really hear it, but if it's off, so let me just, uh, like... So it, it, it's like what it lets me do really is set the amp a bit brighter and make everything more lively on the amp. And then it fills in just a little area that um, would that see, then sounds missing to me without it, if you yep. know what I mean. So it's, um, it's actually quite bright. And it like softens off the, the brightness, but you can still get you know, that nice stratty. Amazing. It's like a fattener, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like a bit like an Echoplex does, you know. It's yeah, yeah. Almost, That's exactly what I was just thinking. Yeah. But um, yeah. but it doesn't change the actual tone. It sort of puts something extra behind it. So that's like, yeah, the most important thing to um, on the board in a way, you know. And then other things come and go, but mm. that's always been there for us for 12 years probably. So. See, worth the price of admission alone. Indeed, that's indeed. Amazing. So all we were hearing there was that tiny bit of slightly longer than the slap back straight into the amp. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about the amp in a minute and talk about pedals in a minute. What you will also have heard when Matt was playing around that um, top bar kind of phrase there was the outlining of chords. So you didn't, you, you were, you played a couple of chords, but as you were going around the, the progression, your note targeting and your choice and all of that goes, I know what these chords are underneath here. Yeah. And that's a really significant part of your playing, isn't it? That's the whole thing for me, really, yeah. Uh, and that was kind kind of a free-timey blues, so sometimes it's fun to not be exactly the same and see if people yeah. can still follow where the chords are. Because, well, I used to say, I'm not very... I'm actually very comfortable playing all by myself. It's not what I do. I don't. I, this is like you're much, doing okay. you're doing much okay. <laughs> worse for me to do this than play to thousands of people if I, if I get the chance to do that instead. You know, um, I'm I'm a band player. I feel like a, I feel like a saxophone player without a band or something. You know, um, but um, but even with the band, yeah, it's all about um, just playing, making it fit together. So mm, yeah. that's probably the number one question, other than about my tone is uh, people ask after, gig after gigs what are those outside notes yeah. that you're playing and there's hardly any outside ones at all if anything it's more inside than blues has become these days but if i'm basically just doing what bb king did 60 years ago if you listen to bb back then he was playing all the changes mm. and fairly sophisticated as well yeah so i'm just doing what bb did but you st at some point Blues guitar and then sub subsequently rock guitar became uh, sort of more minor pentatonic based, which of course uh, is great, and I use that all the time still. But um, uh, it sort of lost a little me melody element for for me in a lot of it compared to yeah. to what what how things sounded. And I grew up on BB and Albert King and those guys is simple as their vocabulary was and it's certainly in the case of Albert King because BB had a lot more stuff up his sleeve than people realise but mm. uh, but Albert King's vocabulary was simple but he made all the changes with the bends and the, yeah. you know yeah. and it was always it was always there and it wasn't just minor pentatonic in the one key over everything and um, then there's other people that can get away with doing that and sound amazing of course I love Stevie Ray and he managed to play E minor pentatonic all the way through Riviera Paradise, <laughs> yeah. which is a which is a <laughs> you always talk about that. <laughs> which is an art. It's an art unto itself, though, to be able to like ring those yeah. to play E minor pentatonic over like an F major seventh at one point or something. And just hang on that note and, and go keep working this yeah. until the change comes back in. And there you go. It sounds yeah, yeah, home yeah. again. It sounds great, but um, I could never make that work for me. So it was always really listening to. BB and later on uh, Robin Ford of course who probably took that to its most uh, mm. advanced 
level um, for my taste, but still sounds like blues. If you sure, know what I mean. sure, yeah. Um, but how really, it's BB. How important? So I don't want to make the whole thing about Johnny, but <laughs> 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 so I'm slightly fascinated by that yeah. whole thing. Um, presumably, playing with a keyboardist helped that because the chances of a keyboardist playing the right chords are a lot higher than another guitar player. Yeah. If, if any of my bands were anything to The do chances of them knowing up. anything about that stuff as well yeah. is a lot higher than yeah. your average guitar player. So if you're just playing in guitar bands, everybody's just playing, you know, uh, and uh, pentatonics. Whereas Johnny's playing, you know, uh, you know, like more involved chord voicings and so yeah, I want to sort of join in with that, and yeah, definitely, it's a, it's a big part of it because it lends a sophistication to it. And playing in trios as a kid and stuff, doing more Jimmy and Cream type stuff, you're not worrying about that so much. So Check. definitely, definitely. Um, a, in fact, I would ask Johnny, I'm like, what is what is that? Because I I still don't really know. I mean, I know enough to be to get around theory wise, but I don't read and I. I've never really worried about that because I've never had a need to. I've just been lucky enough to just play, you mm, know, yeah. and, and play in bands and then write my own songs and make records and things. So it's never been that important. So I still don't know what some of it is, but um, I mean, you could put bring it all down to, uh, to me, really. Each chord that I'm playing, I'm either playing a minor pentatonic or a major pentatonic. And it's sort of as simple as that with the occasional diminished thing. But other than that, I don't really know... Uh, what I'm doing, uh, and you know, so if you put a minor and major pentatonic together, you've kind of got a mixolydian type sound anyway. Yeah. And um, that's where it, that's where my knowledge runs out <laughs> of what I'm doing. Really, it's um, and and also not um, also seeing chords and single line stuff as the same. I think that's the next step of what we're talking about. Really, is not seeing a chord as like this is a shape. Yeah. And now I solo, you know, right. so it's... Interchangeable from chord to... to chord to, to melody. Uh, as you would if you were, and I don't play any piano, but if you were to look at a piano, mm -hmm. you know, you either play the notes all at the same time, or one after another, and mm -hmm. that gives you a chord or a melody. Um, whereas on guitar, you know, because we start by learning fixed shapes or whatever, yep. and then uh, then you start blowing some pentatonics, and you sort of they get separated, and, and they shouldn't be, or, or I don't want them to be anyway. So. Um, if you haven't checked it out, Matt did a really great video with Hal Leonard, was it? It is Hal Leonard, yeah. 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 Um, which I sat through the other night. Long again. time ago now. Yeah, yeah. Is it still available? It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really, really worth a watch because Matt goes into all of these topics quite deeply and obviously plays some really nice stuff with the band as well and it just gets into that uh, that stuff a little more deeply. Yeah, it's more conceptual, I suppose. The, the, the sophistication word is, is it, isn't it? Yeah. That's, when you talk about the difference between the way you play and the way, I don't want to be disparaging about and the way anybody else, anyone plays, but like normal blues guitar, the way I would play it, the difference is what people talk about is sophistication. Yeah. And as you say, once once you explain it, it's not that complex. It's not yeah, really. But then, but then he starts playing. It's like oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah, a yeah. million years. Well, the complex bit know? is the complex bit is connecting <laughs> your brain understanding it and your fingers doing it. Yeah. That's that's the practice bit, right. isn't it? So yeah, it absolutely. But so. Matt's um, his guitar tech when he's around um, Simon Law, who I I've known since I first got over here, and who knew you as a kid. Yeah. Because when I first saw you, you're, you're 25 playing, and, and I was like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. And Simon's told me that you played the same way when you were like 15. I you had well, that it's thing. Really? It's yeah. funny for me to say, really, isn't it, I guess, because I don't think about it like that, but yeah, I did just, I mean, I, I started messing around with the guitar and then I was doing gigs within six months of that and it, uh, this friend of mine's got some tapes and it sounds all right. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not, but, but I've thought about that and it's not really that I was, had that much knowledge or vocabulary, um, but I, for whatever reason or my influences informed me of mm. the core ingredients 
to sounding good, whether you play a lot of notes or not many at all. And th yeah. there's there's a there's just some basic ingredients that if you have command of those, which would be time and tone, really, you can play one note or a hundred, um, and they'll sound good. If you, right, and it, so it's not. Do you like think you can learn that though? Uh, so this is this is my big question. Yeah, for I don't life. know about that. Yeah. You is can that get whether better. or not you can you can improve, mm. but you know there's like someone said you had that when you, you you just had it yeah and it's you know you've you've also got that thing as well that where you attack I don't have it right I I know cause and I know the theory and all all that sort of stuff and I love it and I'm getting better at it but that thing we just go and just own it I don't know whether or not you can learn how to do yeah. that. But surely some of that has to do with context and it has to do with situation because if your first band had been, I don't know, Metallica tribute band. Yeah, it wouldn't have been any good. You, you, <laughs> yeah. you probably wouldn't have taken to it no. quite as naturally as you did. No, and it, but it was the other way around for me anyway. I started playing to try and play right from the start. Like my first gig, I was doing Thrillers Gone and, yeah. wow. and so Howling you knew Wolf. That then, and that was... Yeah, so it's been a sort of singular pursuit, you know. Mm. And the flip side of that is, I'm a horrible session guitarist, and ho I mean, really, I've I, I've never, I can't play anything that people want me to when they want me to. So right. I, I okay. tried when I first moved to London. I was like 19, and um, I I got put up for a couple of pop sessions, and I remember going. I'm in the control room, and the producer's like, you know, can you just play? <laughs> So, some just like a D arpeggio, and I kept putting some little <laughs> on it or something, <laughs> and uh, and I didn't even know what I was doing. He goes, "Yeah, that's great. If you could just not do that thing." <laughs> um, and in the in the end, he takes the guitar from me. He goes, "No, just like this." And I'm like, "Listen, I don't want to waste your time. Um, you should probably get it done. You'll probably get it done quicker yourself if you just do it." And I, you know, don't uh, this this. I'm not the man for the job. And that was the last session I ever did where somebody wanted me to play what they but wanted yeah, rather yeah, than yeah, what yeah, I well. felt. Oh, there's so much hope in there. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's great hope in that singularity But I'm vision. a lot poorer because of it. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, it'd be nice to be able... Like, i tell you who's amazing. Um, of course, we know who's amazing. Josh Smith. Yeah. Um, um, because Josh has a job... Yeah, get your horn for Josh. Josh. Uh, but... Um, because he, he has the Josh Smith thing and you can tell it's Josh. But also, he's really versatile and he can yeah. do all those sessions, you know and play all kinds of stuff and uh, basically with me what what you see is what you get so um, uh, to some degree and uh, I, I it's a uh, it's more of a conversational thing for me mm. in fact we're just doing a video for our friends at Two Rock Amplifiers uh -huh. it was me and Josh and the the videographer wanted us to go over some stuff again and mime to what we play <laughs> just for the shots you know and I was like I, I can't and to me that's like having it's like trying to have a conversation again, yeah. Yeah, word for wow. word. Yeah. Now, okay. we could talk about the same subject, and a lot of the same ideas would come up if we started this entire thing again, mm -hmm. right? We could cover the same basis, but to try and say, the same say thing. It exactly, yeah. and that's what playing is to me, that's, yeah. that's what it is. So unless it's a genuine conversation, then I can't be involved, really. It's, that's how I play. So I'm a rubbish session guitarist, and I'm much poorer because of that. <laughs> but because I just play blues how I play it. So. Oh, it's a trade-off though, isn't it? it because is. you have the singularity of vision, and that's what if if you are an, a slight tangent here. I was having I can't remember watching something on the TV the other night about sidemen um, and about uh, that whole world. And to me, the difference between an artist and a musician is the artist is, has got a foot in your camp. Camp they can't do anything different because the singularity of vision is so. Mm straight yeah that you kind of have to do that thing that you're called to do without yeah wishing to get you know too airy fairy about it whereas musicians i'm over in the corner playing sweet home alabama <laughs> yeah but you get paid to do the gig that, that's you it you get paid to learn. yeah yeah and i've done, I've fun, done some great. of that as yeah, well yeah. you know but um i'm just not very good at it and it ends up going off on a tangent even and, and which can be fun as well you know i played in some bands and we'd end up jamming out and then the people whose wedding it was wouldn't <laughs> that into it. You know? <laughs> it's basically like, it's, it's, it's Stevie Ray on the Bowie gig, isn't it? Yeah, That's yeah. What it is. I, pretty much. Right. So, um, you know, you got to roll with it. But um, 
Yeah, that's what it's always been. And you have to f- follow that, yeah. Yeah. Let's okay. go to some sounds. Let's, yeah, so, so yeah. Well, I want to know, because I've seen your pedal boards over the years. Mm. What is it? Can we do another thing before we do that, please? <laughs> about amps, about the amp. Okay. Can we? Please, yes, we can. please, yes, please, okay. please. Okay, all right. Matt, you explain something to me. So, because if we get the amps up first, okay, is perfect. that all right? Yeah, good. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> He's been so excited to ask you I this. Know, I always thought about this because we sort of touched, we on, touched it on it once before. before. I know we and, did. And not only it because of this, but because we get asked it on the show all the time. Right. How do I set my amp up? And when I asked you this question four or five years ago, whenever it was, yeah. you told me the most amazing answer about the way you you walk up to any amp and yeah. set it up. Yeah, we could, could plug just... in any one of them and do it, really, yeah. So we'll go through it, yeah? Could you, yeah, could you All right. explain? So we've got Matt's um, signature 2-Rock here, which is what he's playing through currently. I am going to get him to play through our new 2-Rock at some point as which well. Which is even better, <laughs> seriously. So that was, that was that's great amp. I'm using that on tour, but I think the new one's even better. So <gasps> there you go. So come on then. Yeah. So, so, you, so you turn up at the gig. Um, and you, it could be any old amp, it could be a Hot Rod Deluxe, it could be yeah. a whatever it is. And you have a particular approach. Oh, I shall get out of the way so the camera no, can right. see. Oh, I found Hot this fascinating. strings out of tune. Um, so, yeah, you don't know what it is, and I go through all the knobs. I kind of, you know, first of all, on almost any amp, a bit more treble and a bit less bass is going to be a good starting point. Very rarely do you find an amp where you need the bass all the way up and the treble all the way up, unless it's like one of those weird 80s JCM 800s where you've got to turn the treble all the way up. But other than that, if it's a Fendery or a Marshall type amp, then you're going to want like a bit more treble than bass, generally. And then I'd listen to the, the, the pop, like... So you can hear like... doesn't really do that much. And then, there it goes. In fact, you could do it without even any sound. You could do it if we get some horrendous noise. Like, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. You can hear where, where the pop does what it does the most, and that's where I put it. So, I do so I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just gonna repeat that. Yeah. Obviously, there's noise coming from the amp, so this may not pick up a lot. What Matt's saying is, there's a point on the pot where it very obviously changes. Yes. And so you find that you find it's that like space. A cusp thing, yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's a couple of them usually, but there's it's where it goes, where it really does what it's supposed to do in that range of EQ. So it's mainly about EQ. This first yeah. of all, yeah. Sure. But it really does the, the treble really adds treble at that point in the pot, so... You get like a wah-wah effect really around that area. So I put it there. And that, that to me means if I'm playing... ...softer, it, uh, or you know... You ...can kind of push the amp with, with your playing, you know, it's, it makes it all the most responsive to me. So I usually couple on a mid, because it depends. You still have to make some executive decisions about how the overall thing you're going for. Bass is really easy to hear it, you know. I would say invariably everybody puts too much bass on their amp usually, mm. especially in volume. That's a common mistake. So I rarely have bass above like three or four on an old Fender or on a on a two-rock. You just don't need it, and it, you know the mids will put in a bit more bass if you want. So it's just... ample amounts of uh, bottom end. Same, and then with the same with the gains really. I... I put it there. Oh, sounds like we got a preamp tube going. I put it there where it starts to uh, just break up, and again, it's the most responsive point, you know. Um, 
and that's it. And then every, then it's kind of flat to me in a way. Damn. And you can do it on Fender or Marshall or anything. And it's that was the that was the bit when you first explained it to me. The bit yeah. that really got me was that the 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 thing you were looking for was the amp in its most neutral stroke responsive yeah position so it wasn't too i think the words you used at the time was it wasn't too much of anything yeah at, it's or not, just or not really enough. as even as i can make it and with you need a good guitar as well but the, the principle applies like even down to there my bridge pickup tone and that's where it stays most of the time same where the wire is <laughs> no brainer, isn't it? and it just uh, same with like, let's say this. That starts to, you know, come alive there, yep. so I put it there. sound and uh, full sound at the same time is what we're going for. Yeah. <laughs> I think what's interesting, sorry, Dan and I just are having a bit of a, a breakdown here because it is that, that we often say this on that pedal show, but the, the physical effect of hearing a loud guitar in the room is um, is quite something and that is something else. It's unbelievable. It's quite loud as well. Well, it's, it's loud. It's but loud, it, but, but it's, it's not painful. No, it's, it's, it's music. Yeah. yeah, it's so musical. It's it's moving. It's so moving. That's part of getting that dialed in right as well. To you know, like I don't even as loud as it is, I don't get told to turn down that much these That's days because it's it all the uh, well. First of all, because it's my gig usually, so <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the perks of what we were talking about. That yeah, singular yeah, 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 pursuit yeah. is yeah. like wow. Well, yeah. that's just the way it is. <laughs> But also, it's 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 a good layout as well, you know. So, um, with some of the edges sort of ironed off, hopefully. But I still want it to be bright. All the great blues tones were bright, you know. Yeah. I, and yeah. I think there's a lot of fear of brightness. But you, with great power, comes great responsibility, as they say. So well, are you saying the edges ironed off? I mean, that's not a setting on the amp. That's not. A, that's you ironing them off. It's you. Yeah. It's you controlling every dynamic and tonal aspect of what's happening. Yeah, there's some finessing involved yeah. as well of yeah. the overall, because this can be, that could be quite horrible sounding. Yeah, if you, yeah. Like See, that's one thing about these particular amplifiers. If, you, if you're amazing, you'll sound amazing. But when you, <laughs> when you hit that fluff, yeah. the whole world knows right. about yeah. it. As, and that, yeah, as loud as that, and it, with with that brightness and that mid range in it and stuff, yeah, you you can um, sound horrible really quickly as well. <laughs> but when people, are, you know, that's the usual thing after the after the gig, isn't it? Is people, man, that amp sounds amazing, and it's like, well, it does if you play well through it, yeah. 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 But that it's like to me, they're like racing cars, you know, and so if and I like a good car to drive on my gig, you know what I mean? So I want the the equipment to be great, but um, you still, you know, if I got in a Formula One car and put my foot all the way on the floor, I'd crash on the first corner. I've no idea what I'm doing with that, yeah, you know? Sure. So the same principle applies. And same with the guitar. I mean, like, you probably hear just, uh, you know, that's a lot of sound coming off of that uh, acoustically, you know? And... Uh, that makes a difference, you know? Absolutely. 
yeah, I remember you saying to me that you, you know, if you're playing at home and you're working stuff out, where you're just playing, chances are you won't be plugged in. You'll just be playing the guitar. Almost never. Yeah. I mean, I don't even have anywhere I can do that right now. It's plugging. So the guitar, the experience of playing guitar other than on a gig, is is that for me? That's what a guitar sounds like, other than if I'm playing with other human beings, and. Hopefully you can kind of hear, even just sat here like that, it kind of sounds the same, you know, because I've been trying to make the guitar sound how I want it to, so that when you plug in, it's all half the battle, really. You know? Amazing. Dan, I very rudely cut across you earlier. You were about to talk about pedals, I think. Nah, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's doing his overwhelm thing again. <laughs> it's just, you know, when you hear someone who's been able to put it together, yeah. get all the pieces together, yep. and then produce that. It's like, that's what it's all about. It's you music. It's, it's, it's astonishing. It's, it's not tone or technique or guitar at that point, is it? It's music. Yeah. I've never really been that into guitar, in a way, if you know what I mean. It's just it's what I happen to use. I remember the first time, it's also a nice process as you get older, because I just don't care anymore as well. <laughs> no, I mean, I love playing, yeah. but I don't care about, like, being, you know, when you're younger and you want to be the best guitarist, or, course, you know, like there's yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I just don't care about any of that at all anymore. I just love playing. I love having a guitar in my hands. I love playing music, mainly with other human beings. Is mm, how yeah. I enjoy music. Like I say, I, I don't really feel comfortable like this. I don't feel like I have anything to say. But if we had a rhythm section and we wanted to play a slow blues, well, I could do that all day. That's mm. the best thing in the world to me. You That's know? where we slipped up. But um, the rhythm section. Yeah, it's it's quite li quite liberating. Get some, after get a some while. dustbins and a bass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it's. I remember the first time I went to the Nam show, you know, and there's all these amazing players. I thought, oh God, like, what do what do I have to to? Um, why am I here? You know, there's a million amazing guitar players, and then you find yourself, you know, in a line with Josh and Kirk Fletcher and Osnoy and. Mark Vettori, one year it was like that was it and Eric Gales, you know, and it's like a whole line of these people. And uh, and I realised I didn't, I thought this is great, this is fantastic, because everybody just sounds completely yeah. different. Yeah. And and uh, and then nobody cares about impressing anybody at that point. It's just, it's like I was just talking now and everybody has something to offer, you know, mm. and that's a really nice feeling after a while. So I... I that's what it is for me these days, it's just music. Yeah. So lovely. Happy days, yeah, happy yeah. days. Okay, I just want to ask you, because you're... So you've got three different, basically, levels of game down there. You've got yeah. The, so I've seen your board throughout the years, sort of, you know, different things that you've chosen to use. And that, what is it that you're looking for yes. in, in an overdrive pedal, in, in a different game stage? Yeah, right. Um, I don't know, maybe you can help me with this. <laughs> um, but when, right, okay, well, when you plug into, into something, yeah, because I mean, I mean, 99% of the time you're playing strats, yes, yeah, or yes, I've been uh, mixing it up a bit more lately, yeah, right, but uh, but this it has to work with this, sure, it's the first step, yeah, so um. I mean, the SOV I've used forever, I wanted something that would make the bridge pickup on a Strat sound better than it does usually, you know, right. so, and that, the mid-range was in the right place to do that with that one, so... It just lifted it up into the right spot, you know. Um. <laughs> Amazing amount of reverb. Just the, the most Albert Collins brilliant amount of reverb. Hey man, you got to get Josh, keep mentioning Josh, but we were doing a thing together the other week, and his is twice as much as that. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It. But that was, again, that's, there's, otherwise it gets, all gets too smooth and nice for mm. me, you know, so you want a bit of quirkiness going on. That's a big part of it for me. I want a bit of noise and yeah. maybe not like that noise that we can't get rid of because of this pedal board, but, um, but you know, a bit of quirkiness. And this this why this is my favorite SVL um, that he's made because it's really like my 61 and it's quirky and it doesn't always do what you expect, you know, no, so, I... um, so yeah, things like reverb and, Sometimes if yeah if you hit because I got a lot of level on the pedal so then it's really <laughs> I 
And uh, quite a lot of top still, but... Um, it's, it's funny hearing it sat here, because having seen you play live a lot yeah. and listen to you on record a lot, I don't associate you with that much gain, and I think that's because of the way you play, because it's clean and, and there's no notes chucked away. Yeah. Every note comes out real clear and... Yeah, I mean, that's as dirty as, again, I don't stack the pedals, so that's yeah, like, okay. that's uh, maximum, that's interesting. you know? Yeah. Um, I used to stack and I used to have less gain on that, but um, actually with Simon doing front of house for me, he would point out, he sometimes say, actually, sometimes it gets quieter when you step yeah. on the next pedal because of the compression. Yes. And that's like the last thing I want is, mm. is the compression. So um, uh, I've done the tap dance now, you know. Um, but so going back to your question, Dan, that was, uh, that's been the, the main bridge pickup sound mm -hmm. for like 10 or 12 years, the SOV, you know. And it just does fat and juicy, but clear still, you yeah. know, so it yeah, never yeah. it never folds over and get, you know, the top never, um, yeah, whatever folds over means, but I know what it means to me where it, you yeah, start yeah. losing the attack yeah. with yeah. it. Um, it never does that. And But then I never have the gain up at past, that's like, what, 11 o'clock. Mm. So. Um, and then this is, I really love this Royal Blue pedal, this, um, it, cause it's super dynamic. So, um, Madison, you know, and strats and tube amps. And how much do you care about that, Matt? <laughs> Not very much. Yay! But um, <laughs> sometimes, especially in like New York City with subways going underneath and stuff, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. like, oh my god, this is going to be horrendous because it's just, and you have to learn to dip your volume, you know. Yeah, right. And I've been trying things to di digress for a second, but I've tried other pickups and you know, dummy coils and all that. Mm. Doesn't sound the same. Yeah. I saw Eric Johnson a few weeks ago, and it's just going Meh, for the whole gig, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just a, just a super lead with a fuzz face into it, and that makes noise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jimmy didn't worry, did he? It's no. part of the sound. It's part. I, I, I'm passionate believer that it's part yeah. of the sound. Although that's quite bad again, right? Yeah, now. we've got. There's something going on here. I need to go through. This has been in and out. Of yeah, I, I foresee. Planes, I foresee it? a new pedalboard future for yeah, Matt. I think so. Uh, but, uh, and then another show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. With blissfully so, quiet pedalboard. Um, going back to that pedal though. Yep. though it, it's really. It cleans up amazing. So sometimes I like the clean sound with the pedal on and the guitar turned down. So you get that kind of. That kind that of Steve, Stevie, sort of, yeah. Oh, it may because if, yeah. if it's not on and the guitar's turned up a bit, because I don't like uh, treble bleed because yeah. they sound weird to me. So this actually like unloads as long as there's no buffers into it, it unloads the pickups and you can get that kind of that Stevie Tin Pan Alley thing. dynamic pedal it's really good that one that sounds <laughs> well obviously with you playing it it sounds <laughs> pretty special do you know what i've just realized i've just realized something uh, we'll go on a slight digression here but it'll be it'll only be brief i promise you we when we talk about one of dan's favorite clean sounds is with like something like a blues driver on quietly mm -hmm. and i've never quite realized that of course it's doing what you just said unloading the pickups yeah yes yeah, that impedance relationship yeah yeah, yeah. ha like a good old fuzz face does it amazingly. Yeah. yeah. So for anyone who for anyone who doesn't get that, um, if you're using a traditional single chord type guitar, like a Strat style or a Teddy style guitar, you turn the volume down and you lose top end because of the way that whole circuit works. Mm -hmm. um, however, if you stick something with a buffer on, and obviously when the pedal's on, it's got a buffer in it. Mm -hmm. It's unloading all yeah. that and it's giving you all your top end back. It is, and the way it's working with the pedal though, because the pedal sets up a certain amount of um, limiting and clipping, and as you as you wind back, then that reduces yeah. 
but it ends. It's this whole dynamic relationship. So it's not just the games. No, that is the point. No, absolutely. It's, yeah, it's yeah, about yeah. the impedance relationship because it's, yeah, they it's, don't all do it the same as no. this one as well for me. This one's magic at it. The yeah. Royal Blue. Well, yeah, that's and that's got to do with the way the the design, the transistors. It's like a lot of the old um, fuzz faces. As you uh, the impedance relationship between the pickups and the pedal, it's actually a two way thing. Yeah. It doesn't just go from the. It, it comes back as well. So the 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 pedal is also loading the pickup, which is why you put a buffer in front of it and you kill that relationship. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't work. So yeah, that whole thing is fascinating. Yeah. The, you see, I used the Vemurum Jan Ray as well sometimes in that spot right and the generator sounds great same thing that you know perfect kind of neck pickup sound mm. you know but it doesn't do that in the same thing. way so i'm this one i'm favoring at the moment for uh for that reason and the sov on the other hand i often this is something again because all this is a moving target for yes. me as well, yeah, well yeah. on the gig so quite often you know you're saying about the amount of gain but quite often I'm soloing with the guitar on 8 or 9 with the SOV on and the bridge pickup. So that one doesn't, it gets slightly darker when you turn the yeah. guitar down. But that's, my goodness, that's kind of good now, isn't it? <laughs> um, but, so ignore that extra noise. So that's actually my lead sound, not quite. a little bit and it thickens it up a bit more so <laughs> sorry it's um there when, when you're watching this there'll be some uh reverb tail offs and the, and the the noise will be all over the place but trust us matt's guitar is blisteringly gloriously fabulously loud in here <laughs> but it's not uncomfortable that's what this that's, is thing. that's what it's, i mean I'm just, yeah, yeah yeah it's a it's yeah. a warm bath yeah you know there's no way to do it, uh, part, as far as I can say. I've never heard a quiet guitar legend. So volume is... <laughs> that you know? is so true. That is so I, true. I can't think... I mean, in terms of, like, blues and... I mean, some of the jazz guys, of course, they can play great at low volume. Wes Montgomery wasn't like that, was he? But, I mean, even... Uh, I, John Schofield John has Schofield, got yeah, an AC30 cranking, yeah, you know? Yeah, the same, and, exactly uh, the same thing. But all the best guitar tones I've ever heard have been... Loud, yeah. So, when you talk with your Kemper, <laughs> yeah. I had an Axe FX actually. Did you? How'd you get on with it? It was great. I probably played guitar for the first two weeks that I had it. Yeah. More than I played guitar since I was like fourteen years old. And wow. I, I, it was like over Christmas and it was winter and I was not on tour or anything. And I just put some headphones in and I just dicked around with this thing for like two weeks. And then I never touched it again. <laughs> because it doesn't have that... I have exercised the it, demon. Yeah, yeah it well, was great fun. It's but horses for courses, isn't yes. it? And I, I, it sounded the, great. The reason, I mean, obviously a bit of a tongue-in-cheek question there, but... Oh God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Do it. I'm going to just hurt the comments section <laughs> here. I just, I don't think that can be done in any other way no. than the way it's being done no. there. I just don't think that it can. It can't. Because it is... A f it's quite a moving experience. Hmm. Actually, the, um, my friend Andy Andy Abel what's up? plays in my girl Christine's band. Uh -huh. And uh, say hello to Christine. Hello, Christine. Hello. <laughs> um, he um, great guitarist from Connecticut. He so they're playing all kinds of different yeah. songs, cover band. You yeah. know, uh, really good cover band. Um, and. Uh, he uses the Line 6 floorboard thing. Yeah. I don't Helix. know which one, something like that. I think New it's one. the older one. Yeah, okay. But he runs it through one of the massive VHT tube power amps. Okay. Um, like with 6550s in it or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he gets uh, through a couple of Bogner cubes and stereo. Yeah. And it puts the air in it. That sounds, that's the best I've heard live of that kind of stuff. Is So he's actually doing it like sometimes the common wisdom seems to be you know, tube preamp and then yeah, everything yeah, else. Yeah. But he's doing all the modeling and then chuck, chucking it into a mighty 120 watt um, power. And he plays it pretty loud as well. So. And then we've got air moving, we've got speakers moving. Everyone's happy. We're all feeling it. Yes. 
just one last quick, uh, one last quick look at the the fuzz because yeah, we're talking about this. Yeah. We're talking about this before, and a really common problem with lots of fuzzes is just the amount of bottom air that they kick out. Yes. So when you've got an amp set up the way that you do, and if we can just hear your clean tone, just just once again, just to remind ourselves of. Not totally clean, but most. Yeah. It's beautiful. So now I can imagine if I go to try and big muff and we put that on there, I mean, it would be massive and huge, but the amount of bottom end. Yes, yeah, I can't use it. Yeah. And you lose all the dynamic well, attack yeah, and everything all, when you'd be gone. All that stuff that you do yeah. with the, you know, the details. The, the, the details. Yeah. Fingers it's on gone. a string. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, one of the things about the, the shanks is the, um, it, it's got the EQ that you can get rid of that bottom end. Same thing we're talking about with the, the um, when Thorpey released the muff room. Yeah. So, you could, so, it's a big muff style thing, but you can dial in the bottom end. Yeah. Um, but I've, I heard this, I heard this in Japan and when I was there in November and again in LA. This this thing is amazing. Yeah, it's a germanium fuzz face type thing. I don't know whether it's exactly like a fuzz face, but it's um, but yeah, it's almost like I'm inverting the the EQ from how it would be on the mm. fuzz. So it's, I'm taking all the bass out and putting a load of treble on, but it's not really treble. Um, this is really loud, by the way. So uh, and I've actually got the level down a bit than how I'd use it live because basically, for, to, this is the newest thing, by the way. Like that's this is the most pedals I've ever had on the board but yeah, um, I, I was surprised to see quite so many Matt. <laughs> yeah it's getting out of hand you know but um, um, this one uh, it was just very usable and it's so sometimes you know it's nice to get your jimmy on isn't it you yeah. know and I, I then I uh, I uh, really really got into the new Doyle Bramwell record when it came out right. I thought it was such a great sound the guitar tones all different fuzz sounds mm. and uh, so I was like, I need a bit of fuzz in my life, you know. So What's it called, that record? The first track is Your Mama Can't Help You No More. Yeah, Rich Man is the yeah. record. Yeah. Doyle just Doyle one Doyle great fuzz sound after another. Actually, I can, well, you know, Doyle Bramwell. Oh, I, really? Yeah, so he was, <laughs> he was tracking, doing some stuff with Paul Stacey. <laughs> and, and Paul called, says, uh, Doyle's here. I'm stuck him on. I'm like, hey, man, just had a chat with Doyle Bramwell. It's awesome. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Well, he's but, the king of fuzz these days. Yeah. For my taste in fuzz, he's like he's got that down that stuff. So, um, so Vemuram, Shanks 4K. <laughs> So, <laughs> observations then, we're talking about bass and treble and the way you knock it down on the amp and you give it a bit more treble and you've got plenty of presence in there and there's that, something I've always loved about your tone which I've noticed as the years have gone on is there is that, I don't want to use the word fizzy because fizzy is a negative word, but there is a presence in the high end by yeah, compression and bite, yeah. Yeah. but I don't think that would work quietly. No, no, it would sound horrible. You, it has to be, or yeah. like even yeah. like doing this today. Yeah. There's no point in me bringing this in and then turning the master volume down. Yeah. Because all of this falls apart at that point. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah, every, yeah. it's like to me this is gain staging from the guitar volume yeah. and the pickup selection through each one of these. Everything is like part of a chain that eventually comes out of the speakers. Then you change about, one oh, thing. We talk, talk about, about this all, all the, time. the time. And to hear someone who's. Does it it's so it? important because that pedal doesn't sound like anything at all until you connect it to him, that guitar and that amp. And, yeah, right. yeah. and at that That's point, right. and then and then it also doesn't sound like anything with the with the volume turned down. No. So, yeah, you, it's, it's it's all interconnected beyond yeah. any way of explaining. It's kind of depressing for for those of us who don't get to play really loud all the time because you know it's there. You know that's where the good stuff is, but. I could. I would say if, you do, if I wasn't able to use an amp 
that powerful. And that's 50, and I've got the new 100 as well, which doesn't really, it's not really loud, it's just even bigger, but um, you can get a similar effect off a smaller amp, but it's still not the same as moving the same, that, mm. that air, yeah, yeah. but you know, like even, uh, yeah, if we had a deluxe, like a nice old deluxe or something, we could get close at less volume, and then the yeah. fuzz would work still. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. So but the amp needs to be in its kind of happy place. Doesn't yeah. It? So I'd rather change amp sizes than that adjust the not, yeah. Like those are not volume controls on amps to me. They are additional tone controls in a way. That's how I see them. So they get put where it sounds best. And then we have to deal with it one way or another, whether it's a piece of so perspex so or, you know, angle it the other way or whatever, that you, that's the workaround. There's no such thing as a master volume. Really. That's amazing. That's you heard amazing. it here, people. Yeah. I'm just going to check this camera's still running, and it is. Happy days. Okay, so we've heard um, delay number one. What do you use delay number two for? Uh, about two songs to uh, get my, you know. Johnson thing going you know, for a second. I mean, it's about two two different songs, and usually it's with this little tremolo that from, ah, right, from okay. Henretta Engineering. Although I have the tremolo built into that too, Rob, but I haven't been using that particular model in the US. I've been using the new one, which doesn't have trem. So this sounds really very close to uh, the, the bias because it's bias trem in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which sounds amazing, but um, just destroys your power tube. So it just because oh, okay. it's loud as I'm running the amp, and then yeah, it's yeah. actually flashing the. You probably know more about this one, Dan. It's flashing the uh, bias on and off. So the yeah. power tube is literally yeah, yeah. just going yeah, on and off. Yeah. And um, which is a good way to really make sure your amp blows up for sure <laughs> after a while. Um, which I've discovered. So this is, uh, I've, it's great, two little trim pots inside, and it adds a bit of uh, hair like the bias does, you know, on the amp, because mm. the amp always gets a bit dirtier when you turn the, the bias. <laughs> Sort of dynamic sound, so it's usually those two together for one of my songs. Mm -hmm. I don't do tap tempo or any of that because is that called Where Do I Have to Stand? It is called Where Do I Have to Stand. That's there you the, go. Check uh, that one out. my favorite one of my own songs to play because it just goes bonkers in the middle. I can do whatever I like. Um, so I don't do tap tempo, so that's set. It's actually slightly fast right now. That should be it, and that's the that's. I don't even know how it's divided. It's not that's not the count, but when we play the song, it's like a triplet delay against it. Oh, okay. So yeah, it'd be a... it works. But it's in tempo, it's in yeah, it's like a twelve over thing. It's like, yeah. yeah. So that's as uh, as you know locked down as my delays get in any way you know or as, as fixed so but again the deep blue works really well um without being exactly right it mm. behaves like an echoplexy type thing so. do you set the tempo of the delay to the tempo of the song or do they play the tempo of the song on the delay or is uh, it not that exact yeah it's just it just sort of works yeah okay. i count the tune off and uh I'm pretty good at getting it pretty close. There In fact, the only deviation is for different drummers that I'm working with because they all feel my count slightly differently. So I'll count something exactly the same and some guys are going to come back from that and some guys are going to come back. So then you have to learn to adjust to who's on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> so little things like that. But um, it, yeah, it is, it's unobtrusive enough mm. that you don't have to be perfect with it. Mm. Like I always thought that with Eric Johnson with the the echoplexes and it somehow he's got all that delay and it's never in time but it mm. sounds yeah. amazing yeah you know? absolutely um but he's good isn't he it's amazing <laughs> it's a bit good <laughs>
Well, so before we, uh, there's something I want to do just uh, to, to play us out, which is um, I really want you to play through uh, my new amp, mm. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Because uh, it would be good to hear it in the hands of you. Um, and what's going on, Matt? You're in the UK at the moment, because this is going to go out this Friday, this video, which is Great. Awesome. Friday the uh, 12th, about the 14th or something. Yeah, so I'm just back here for the first time in a year, actually. Um, so you're doing Edinburgh Jazz and Blues Festival on Saturday. Oh, wicked. Um, and then I'm off to, where am I going? Slovenia for a few days and then Germany. And then we're back and we're doing three UK gigs um, with a fantastic guitarist called uh, Henrik Frieslander. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, Henrik, I'm saying your surname wrong, but... He's a tricky beggar, isn't he? He's great. Really good yeah. and great songs and you know like arrangement you know the whole yeah, thing yeah. that I enjoy where somebody's yeah I like more him. than just guitar so he's really good so he's doing actually a blues for Gary uh, tour with a couple of Gary Moore's old bandmates so oh, it's kind nice. of, he's done an album as not that was his way into playing you know yeah. so uh, so we're doing some co-bills so we're doing under the bridge in London and tunnels in Bristol tunnels in Bristol and Maryport Blues Festival so I should have looked up what those dates were no it's fine you can I... you can go onto matt's uh, <laughs> site and if we can if we're smart enough we might be able even able to put them on the screen um or at least Scrolling at across. least provide a link um i because... thought that actually happened in real life in here from watching the show i didn't realize you were adding that <laughs> it does, it's like virtual thought, reality. yeah i thought <laughs> um if you're watching on friday the 14th of july and you're anywhere near edinburgh get there tomorrow afternoon saturday the 15th. Very good. <laughs> uh, it's in the it's in the daytime. Um, apparently, there's some the some business going on down there. So uh, anyway, in the, in the park, just where the castle is, there's lovely, yeah. lovely park. Yeah, I think, I think Matt's it's actually there, doing a bagpipe right? solo. I am. Yeah, I yeah. love bagpipes. No, get down there. And uh, failing that, uh, he's back in a couple of weeks. Please check his website for tour details. Yeah. Matt, thank you so much. Thank for coming you. In. It's been Oh, it's such a joy. It has. Thank you so much. Thank Bruce. you for having really me. Appreciate I'm, it. it's, uh, I'm a big fan. Quick thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK that and Europe. That's Anderton's Music. And in America, that is Rift City Music. And in Australia, it is Pedal Empire. Excellent. And thank you to everyone that's gone to uh, that pedalshowstore.com and bought themselves a lovely gallant t-shirt hat. Yeah, we gave Matt a discount on his, so that was good. <laughs> Benevolent. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. We're going to um, experience your new amplifier. Yes. With Matt playing through it. Hooray. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll see you next time. Yeah, cheers, guys. Thanks thank you for so watching. Much. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Cheers, fellas. <laughs> That's pretty cool with no pedals to be able to go from fat strat bridge pick up to you know your classic <laughs>